In this video, I'm going to discuss how MAC address tables are populated on switches. I find that there's often confusion about how MAC address tables work and how frames are flooded in layer 2 switches. In this example, I've got a layer 2 switch. In other words, I haven't configured any VLANs. This switch essentially doesn't have any configuration apart from the default configuration. When a switch first boots up, it doesn't know about any MAC addresses in the network unless you've statically configured them. To simulate that, I'm going to power cycle the devices in Packet Tracer and I'll connect it to the console of the switch. So essentially, this switch doesn't know about the MAC addresses of the PCs in the topology when the switch first boots up. So show MAC address table. Notice the MAC address table is empty. The switch doesn't know the MAC addresses of these four PCs. The only way the switch is going to learn the MAC addresses of these devices is if they send traffic into the network. Now in the real world, operating systems such as Windows broadcast packets when they boot up. So switches will learn the MAC addresses of Windows devices when they first start up. In this example, however, the packet tracer PCs don't send any traffic, even though they are configured with IP addresses and are configured with MAC addresses. What I'm going to do is go to simulation mode in packet tracer, and let's see what happens when PC1 pings PC2. That's the IP address of PC2. We can verify that by opening up a terminal window or CMD prompt in Windows and looking at the configuration. ipconfig slash all shows us both the MAC address and IP address of this PC. So when I press enter, notice two packets are generated. We've got an ICMP packet as well as an ARP packet. PC1 doesn't know the MAC address of PC2. So it sends out a broadcast. In other words, it sends out an ARP message requesting the MAC address of PC2. Source of this packet is PC1. Notice the MAC address in the frame is this. Destination MAC address is a broadcast. So when that frame hits the switch, the switch is going to flood the frame. At this point, the switch knows the MAC address of PC1. Broadcasts are flooded by layer 2 switches, but at least the switch has learnt the MAC address of PC1. PC4 and PC3 will drop the ARP request because the ARP request is a broadcast looking for the MAC address of this PC. PC4, as an example, isn't configured with that IP address. PC4 has this IP address. PC3 has this IP address. So the only PC that's going to reply is PC2. It received this broadcast looking for its MAC address. So it's going to reply using a unicast to the MAC address of PC1. PC2 knows the MAC address of PC1 because the original broadcast came from PC1. So this broadcast was sent by PC1. So PC2 knows the MAC address of PC1 and can reply to that MAC address with its MAC address. So in the ARP header, notice the source MAC address is PC2. Target MAC address is PC1. So the PC replies, that gets to the switch. The switch sees that the destination is PC1, source MAC address is PC2. So at this point, the switch knows where PC2 is. The switch knows that this MAC address is connected to gigabit 102 because this frame arrived with the source address on gigabit 102. Because the switch knows where PC1 is, 
in other words, it learnt that PC1 is connected to gigabit 101, it's only going to forward this frame out of that port. So the frame only goes to PC1, it doesn't get sent to PC4 and PC3. So now the ICMP messages are sent only between PC1 and PC2 because the switch knows where those devices are in the topology. So the ICMP messages will only be sent between those two devices.